30 kilometers east of the plant, the forest has been scorched by the radioactive blast from the explosion. But the disaster area already stretches well beyond. Since the explosion, radioactive particles carried by the clouds have been falling with the rain. A leopard spot pattern of contamination has affected the Ukraine as well as Belarus and Russia. On the 1st of May, the wind shifts and areas of Kiev are also contaminated. As seen from this map, drawn up from the readings taken by Colonel Grebenyuk's men. The seriously contaminated areas appear in red, surrounded by areas where the radiation level was normal. But the population is still kept in the dark. There is only one report, a tiny article on the bottom of page three of the Pravda, playing down the accident and claiming the danger has passed. The roof was caving in and there we were, acting as if nothing was happening. By going ahead with the May Day festivities, it was like the country refused to acknowledge the situation. That was the second phase in the huge Chernobyl disaster. Six days after the accident, despite radiation levels several thousand times higher than normal, authorities encourage people to participate in May Day celebrations, even in areas they know to be seriously contaminated. I watched the May Day 1986 festivities with my own eyes. I was there and I witnessed it, the parade of death. It was a parade of death. Those were terrible deaths. Disturbingly, all footage of May Day 1986 has now disappeared from the Ukrainian National Archives. All that remains are Igor Kostin's photos. Shcherbitsky, the first secretary of the Ukraine, also went to the festivities with his family and his grandchildren. It's true that, in theory, that seemed very important to us. To avoid any panic. But had we known how much radioactivity was already in the air? How many were contaminated during the festivities? Not a single study has yet been published. Chabinsky, first secretary of the Ukrainian Communist Party, later committed suicide. One week after the explosion, the exodus continues. The inhabitants of the city of Chernobyl, seven kilometers from the plant, are evacuated. So are all the villages within a 30 kilometer radius around the plant. 130,000 people are moved, many of whom have already been dangerously contaminated. A 300,000 hectare area straggling the Ukraine and Belarus is abruptly evacuated and isolated from the rest of the world. A vast region uprooted an entire culture ripped from its land. A world wiped out in a few days' time by an invisible enemy. <laughs> it was worse than a war. Here you couldn't see the enemy. In a war, you see the cannons, the machine guns, the tanks. Here, you see nothing. The radiation is everywhere. It goes right through you. It gets into you and you only start feeling the effects later, sometimes years later. It's terrifying. Meanwhile, the radioactive cloud continues to drift over Europe. It floats over Bavaria and northern Italy. 
radioactive cesium-137 and iodine-131 rained down on the south of France and Corsica. Crops and pastures are seriously contaminated. While French authorities deny its presence, the cloud reaches Great Britain and spreads into Greece. In Chernobyl, the level of radioactivity continues to climb. 6,000 tons of sand and boric acid have filled the hole. But underneath this gigantic plug, the white-hot magma continues to smolder. Ten days after the disaster, Gorbachev personally invites Hans Blix, director of the powerful International Atomic Energy Agency, to visit the site. He is the first expert and the first Westerner to visit Chernobyl. Well, we have seen the site from the air. And we have seen that a little smoke is still coming up from the damaged plant. There was a good deal of talk about the risk of a second explosion. And I remember that when we were in Moscow, actually, we had a friend, a relative of one of my experts, uh, phoned him and said, well, you know, we hear rumors that a second reactor might also explode. At the bottom of the reactor, 195 tons of nuclear fuel are still burning, giving off incredible heat that is gradually melting the sand. On the surface of the plug, cracks begin to appear. Once we plugged up the hole, the temperature started to rise. We were afraid that because it could have caused another explosion. It was terrifying. Scientists came to take readings. They were very worried. They were afraid the critical temperature would be reached and it would set off a second explosion. That would have been a terrible tragedy. 